Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the Model 3 performance that I had for the past 30,000 miles and everything that happened to this car, including my efficiency, the lifetime efficiency, all the issues that this car has had so far. Hopefully, no more issues. And just my experience and what I think about this car. This is my fifth Tesla. As you know, this is my third Model 3. I had a Model Y and I had a Cybertruck. First, let's talk about the issues that I had with this car. So the first one, when I got the car delivered, I noticed that this right here, this little glass right here, was not attached correctly. And as you can see, they glued it back on. So there was like some sort of glue on it or something. And they glued this glass back on. This was the first issue. This is like so insignificant compared to all the other issues that I've ever had with any of my other Teslas. So this was the first thing and I was like, okay, let me get this fixed. The mobile service guy came in and fixed that. Obviously that took him like five minutes to do. The next thing, it was actually a quite major one. It was something wrong with the rear suspension of this car. And I had to take it to service multiple times and it was actually very hard to fix and that just goes back to my experience overall with the tesla service center and when i was going over bumps there was something squeaking in the rear of the car so i was like let me just take it to service and see what they say so that took them a very long time to fix because first i took it to one service center and if you know i have a very bad experience with tesla service centers because they can never get it right so I had to pretty much take it for little weeks to service centers and at that point i was just like do i lemon this car again like i've done with the cybertruck and i was like i just don't think it's worth it so um that was literally the only thing one of the dampers turns out was defective so the electronic dampers or something so they replaced the dumper first time they did it incorrectly that did not fix the issue so they just started replacing literally the entire subframe of the car and if you know for the subframe they literally had to disconnect the motor they had to remove the rear motor. They had to remove the entire rear of the car to even access the rear subframe. Like we're talking about subframe, you guys. So they replaced the subframe because they just did not properly identify the issue. So after they replaced the subframe, I drove over the bumps. Next thing you know, it's still squeaking. So I was like, what is going on? I'm taking it to a different service center. Different service center is like, okay, we're just gonna put like uh, microphones or whatever. Like they have some automotive microphones to figure out where is the issue coming from. So they found out there was a completely different damper. So they replaced the left one, but turns out it was the right one. Once they replaced the right damper, imagine like if they would, if they would have properly identified the issue first, they wouldn't have to spend two weeks literally replacing the entire subframe of the car and wasting my time. But this is Tesla service. I've said it for little past whatever, five years this channel has existed is that Tesla service is just the worst, especially at identifying issues. So nobody's surprised that it took them that long to figure out what was actually causing it. And yeah, so they fixed that. And after that, so once they fixed the rear damper, the car did not have any other issues until like 25,000 miles, I would say. And at 25,000 miles, my headliner lamps stopped working. So I was like, oh, that's weird. So I'm like making an appointment. They literally fixed it in like three hours. I dropped it off at the service center. They took down the entire headliner assembly and they found out that one of the cables, something wrong with the cable. So they replaced the cable and my lights are working again so with that being said this car has only had three issues if we really don't count the fact that they took two weeks to figure out the rear damper because it only goes to show how they're just unable to identify the issue right like it would have been so much quicker if they knew what was the issue if you've been on my channel or you've seen any of my other videos you know that the amount of issues my any previous tesla has had it's like incompatible like i literally had my battery replaced at 20,000 miles in my other Model 3 performance. So the fact that this car literally like has no issues at all, I'm like, do, do, do. Let, me, let me like find some wood and knock on wood because like really nothing super major besides the rear damper, that's it. And I'm just so impressed with everything about this car. It's like literally when I had the Cybertruck and I was telling y'all about how much I hate the amount of issues that the Cybertruck had, mind you by, by 11,000 miles, my Cybertruck had two motors replaced steering wheel replaced seat replaced the windshield replaced the windshield wiper many panels in the bed were replaced so many issues a complete lemon going from that to this car i was literally saying in the cybertruck video i was like if not for the cybertruck i would have gotten the model 3 performance and i did get it so let's talk about battery degradation in this car because i know y'all also interested since we're on the topic 
and in 30,000 miles this car lasts 4 kilowatt hours of energy because at full it used to charge to 79 and I know I'm not the only person whose car was only able to charge to 79 instead of 82 which the pack is 82 they would only charge to 79 kilowatt hours at 100 percent when the car was brand new so right now it only charges to 75 so it already lost four kilowatt hours of the capacity and this is not significant at all because technically you lose the most when the car is like the first 20 30 thousand miles that's when you're gonna lose the most so I'm not surprised that the car has lost this much energy and hopefully this battery pack lasts much longer than on my other Teslas when I had to replace it two times in the 100,000 miles of the car. So now let's talk about the interior because I have white interior and it hasn't been as great as the rest of the car unfortunately and this is just goes back to the white interior and I just want to tell y'all that I really do not recommend getting white interior I just don't think white interior is the move if you're getting anything besides the performance Tesla because in performance cars white interior is given to you for free but look at the driver's seat right let's talk about the driver's seat so we already see like you see this like dark spots right here so this is like the first thing and the reason is because of these bolsters in a performance seat when you like get in and out all your black jeans are gonna leave all these stains there is absolutely no way i can clean this and with my other tesla with a hundred thousand miles i also made the same video and i said that at a hundred thousand miles it had about the same issue and the bolsters did not exist back then but look at all this little you see like the like the holes in the fabric right here right there we have like some holes down there this whole part look it's completely just torn apart right so this is like not ideal but obviously this is the spot where i get in and out all the time so it kind of makes sense but like as for the rest of the seat it's in perfect condition there is literally no issues at all like nowhere here like everything here looks fine this is very durable no issues at all like this is very easy to clean this is the only part so the corners right here and right here see as you can see like the leather here is like literally i don't know if you guys can see but like there's all this like wrinkling going on the rear seats have no issues at all like my car don't really have any passengers ever and the doors look perfect like it literally looks brand new i'm not gonna lie like the only thing i would say is that and I said it in the same video for the 100,000 miles. Let me wait for this helicopter to get out. In my video with 100,000 miles, I said that the seat belts in the rear would leave the stains. And you can see right here, it does exact same thing right here and right there. So the seat belts, because they're so black, they're still leaving the spots. You cannot clean this at all. Like once it's here, just leave it like what it is. So yeah this is like the only thing i would say if i had a choice for like a regular tesla i would not pay a thousand dollars for the white seats because if this is what it is at thirty thousand miles the chances are that i would have to replace it if i had to pay a thousand dollars for the white seats i would not do that in this case because i feel like this leather is just so much softer than it used to be this time it's just like literally not as durable as the one that i had in a hundred thousand miles because that one in a hundred thousand miles only had like the black marks from the jeans but this one not only has the marks like the whole leather is just falling apart and i'm just like this is not normal this is a complete different like material that they're using this time yeah i would totally not pay a thousand dollars but if you're getting a performance the white seats are a free option and at that point it's just you getting a free thousand dollars you know if you want to deal with replacing the seat later on which like i don't think it costs that much um entire seat is probably like two thousand dollars but you can find just the cover like the bottom cushion of it on ebay for much cheaper so you can always replace just the bottom cushion you don't have to replace the entire seat and is it like a big deal i don't think so yeah i think it can last like a hundred thousand miles but a hundred thousand miles i would not be surprised if there's going to be like an entire hole on the left side when i get in and out of the car so just keep in mind about the whites if you do not want to deal with this just get the black seats i'm pretty sure they're way better than this ones so yeah now let's talk about the efficiency of the car so as you can see it's 30,003 miles distance lifetime i'm not sure why it's not matching the actual odometer it's off by seven miles no idea why but the energy right here is 296.6 which is amazing in my opinion is a very good efficiency for a performance car and it's on par with any other performance car that i've driven my other model 3 had like 310 i believe efficiency for the lifetime at 120 000 miles 
So this is not surprising that it's a little bit more efficient than the other one. So if you're in the market for a Tesla and this video was helpful, please consider using my referral link. I'm not sure what's the current promotion for you guys when you buy a car, because sometimes they completely take away the entire program, sometimes they bring it back, but I'm getting some credits from Tesla that I can use for like free supercharging and whatnot. And for jackets like this, this is the Tesla jacket that I got with the credits from the people who are buying the cars with my link. Whatever the bonus is, please consider using my link. It could be like three months of FSD. It could be some money off of your car. Check the link and see what's the current promotion is. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video was helpful to those of you who are looking into buying one of these cars and seeing what it's like for the first year or like two years, 30,000 miles. And I'm gonna keep you updated about this car. Please check out all my other videos and I'm gonna see you on the next one. Bye.